Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Meet the Masters uh, Homeschool Art, the mini edition. So today we're going to talk about French painter Henri Rousseau, and he lived from 1844 to 1910, so that makes him roughly a contemporary of Van Gogh and Seurat, whose art we looked at a couple of weeks ago. So Rousseau lived in France, um, so most of his working life he lived in Paris. So this is a self-portrait Rousseau did, and if you look at the background behind the flags, you see the Eiffel Tower, and that had just been finished in 1889. Uh, this painting is from 1890. So that was built for the World's Fair, and all those flags, that's what those are about, is for the World's Fair. So the style of art that Rousseau did is uh, called uh, naive art. So naive art is art that's usually made by somebody who doesn't have formal art education or training. And so it can be kind of more childlike or more simple. Um, it doesn't mean it's not good art. It just means that it doesn't follow a lot of the rules of how to create very realistic 3D looking paintings. So I've shown you the works of a couple more naive artists in the slide. So the first one is Maude Lewis. She's a Canadian painter, and they just made a movie about her life called Maudie. And then on the right is a painting by Grandma Moses. And the cool thing about her is she didn't start painting until she was 78 years old. So it's never too late to start. So if you look at this painting, it does look a little wonky. You know, you have uh, the tiny hands, the big legs. It doesn't look very childlike. The legs are really oddly positioned. And a classically trained painter's work would probably look quite a bit different. But Rousseau was completely self-taught. He didn't even start painting until he was in his early 40s. When he was 49, he was able to retire from his job, which was a toll collector, so the kind of a customs official in Paris, and he got a small pension that enabled him to paint full time. Um, and because of that job, by the way, for the rest of his life uh, in the art world, he was known as Les Douaniers, the toll collector, even though at that point he didn't work as a toll collector anymore. So while some of his work is maybe a little rough around the edges, it really doesn't take away from the fact that it's often just beautiful work to look at. So this one is just so peaceful and calm. And the fact that the proportions are often the buildings in the front are maybe too small in relation to the buildings in the back really doesn't matter that much. And some of his work is just fantastically beautiful and very skilled, I think. Uh, so this one has this lovely twilight color. You have the Pierrot and his lady in the front. You have those delicately branched trees and those funky little clouds there, the two white ones and the one black ones. I just love those. I think they're such a fun little just ding on the painting. Love it. So this is one of his most famous paintings. You have this lion that's coming up to the sleeping gypsy on the ground and he has this kind of look like, what on earth is this on his face? And you have these soft gradients kind of almost reminds me of what Georgia O'Keeffe uh, later did. Anyway, this painting is well enough known that it actually kind of became a pop culture thing. So here you have the Simpsons version of the painting. And I think the, the creators of the Simpsons must have really liked Rousseau because they used his paintings in a few different episodes. So this is one of the first of his jungle paintings. You saw the lion and the sleeping gy gypsy there. Anyway, he did a lot of paintings of kind of jungle plants and animals. He actually never went to the jungle. He never got to travel very much. He uh, never had much money during his lifetime. Most of his references he got from going to the botanical gardens and the natural history museum, or he got it from books. But his paintings are so full of life. So if you look at this one, you can see how scared the tiger is of the lightning and the thunder. He's kind of cowering. He's got this <gasps> expression on his face. And uh, you can see the rain is pounding down. The, the tiger's kind of half hidden by the foliage, which is one of those things you kind of see over and over in his work and isn't super realistic and it was not commercially successful. Um, the public and critics hated his work. 
they were used to this very realistic or romantic, very skillful art. And these paintings weren't realistic. You have the flowers that were often way bigger than the animals kind of towering over them. Uh, the animals didn't look particularly realistic. Um, but other artists love him, loved him. So the story of Picasso walking down the street and, and there were these stalls um, that sold canvases and he spotted one of Rousseau's paintings and it was just being sold for the canvas. So somebody would have bought it and just painted over the Rousseau painting and reused the canvas and, and Picasso rescued it. He went, wow, this guy is great and uh, actually tracked Rousseau down. They became friends and Picasso was one of Rousseau's staunchest supporters and actually threw a banquet in Rousseau's honor that was probably the highlight of Rousseau's life. So his art is just so joyful and vibrant and full of life. Um, I love all the perfectly evenly spaced little oranges in this painting. But just because his work wasn't commercially successful doesn't mean he wasn't successful. Um, Rousseau did what he loved to do. Other artists of his time, like Picasso, loved him. And artists who came after him cite him as an influence. And they looked up to him as someone who was very much marching to the beat of his own drum. Uh, so the reason you're learning about him today is because he changed the way people look at art and what is considered art. And because his style of painting influenced so many of the painters who came after him, who loved the passion that they saw in his art, Rousseau never wavered in doing art that was quintessentially his own, even if it wasn't what other people thought art should look like. So this is a this is a picture of Picasso with two Rousseau paintings he bought. So one was a picture of Rousseau's wife and the other one is a self-portrait of Rousseau. And these paintings traveled with Picasso until the day he died. So for someone who is considered one of the greatest painters of all time to think that Rousseau's work is amazing, that should tell you something right there. And while he was not commercially successful during his lifetime, his work is now very valuable. Some of the paintings you looked at uh, sold for like two and a half million dollars, so not bad. So when Rousseau died, his friend Guillaume Apollinaire, uh, who was a poet, wrote him this poem and put it on his gravestone. It says, we greet you, gentle Rousseau, you hear us. And then it lists the people that were at his funeral. Let our baggage pass free through heaven's gate. We'll bring you brushes, paints, and canvases so that you can devote your sacred leisure in the real light to painting, as you did my portrait, painting the face of the stars. All right, so that's all we have on Rousseau today. Let's make some art. All right, so for our project today, we are just going to need some construction paper or you can also use old magazine pages for this project. So I'm going to use a black piece of cardboard or uh, construction paper, but you can use a just a brown uh, back of a cereal box or, or some cardstock as well. And then I drew a lion, I mean a tiger, on some construction paper. Um, and you can make it lion, you can make some monkeys, whatever you want to make. So uh, just draw them with like a black pen on construction paper and cut them out. And then I cut out a whole bunch. You can see they're just random here. Just use some pinks and some greens and some different, different greens. And I cut out a bunch of leaf shapes and you can see those right there. So I just have a pile of different leaf shapes. So now I'm going to go ahead and start arranging these on my paper. Uh, I will probably not finish the whole thing, but I'm going to start with my tiger because I want my tiger to be in the background and kind of hidden by the foliage the way that Rousseau um, did his. So I'm going to get a glue stick and I'm going to stick down this tiger. All right, my tiger is ready. So now I'm going to start arranging 
um, my leaf shapes on there. And I might just add some more. I found these 10 magazine pages that had sort of like cactus type plants and flowers on them. So I might, might cut some of these flowers or maybe the palm trees on here out and use those too. Um, but I'm going to just start arranging my leaf shapes on top of the tiger. And I'm going to have some come up from the bottom and I'm going to have some hang down from the top because in the jungle you have, you have plants like hanging down and trees that are way higher than the animals too. So that is my plan. So there you see I have all my paper cut out leaves and flower shapes arranged on my background. So now I'm going to stick them down. Okay, so I am all finished. I decided not to use the magazine pages, but there is my tiger in the jungle, a la Rousseau. Um, can't wait to see what you guys make. Uh, you can send me an email with your picture attached to starbranchlibrary at adalib.org and maybe we can feature your work in one of the uh, upcoming videos. I would love to kind of show other kids what you guys are doing. So hope to see you next time. Bye bye.